Hi, I'm Seth with the Fleece Fox Studio. Thanks for tuning in. Today I'm taking a look at the DJI Mavic Mini. This is the base model. So let's open the box and see what is inside. Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay, very cool. It's amazing that the controller is actually bigger than the drone itself. So there's the content of the box here. Let's open up this one first and see what's inside. These are the accessories that come with the base model. You have your charging cable, your adapters for iPhone, USB-C, and traditional USB micro. You've got a little screwdriver, your sticks that go for the controller, a quick start guide, user manual, and then your extra props and screws. Well, let's push these aside and take a look at the controller. Pull this out of its little safety bag here. Now this is my first time looking at this. I'm gonna remove this little sticker here. It just reveals your DJI. Got some adhesive on there. Maybe that'll come off later. So these are the antennas, which should just pop forward here. I'm really hoping that this will fit my phone with case. Let's see how well it does here. Yeah, it's got a pretty tight tolerance. I don't think it's meant to hold your phone with the case on it, which is a little bit disappointing, but that may be good enough to hold it in as long as I am really careful there. So you can see that it is uh, supposed to go in these little grooves but uh, does not. Let's go ahead and pull the phone out of its case here and see how well it fits in here. Yeah, definitely a much more snug fit there as it is supposed to be. So let's just take a little look around the controller. Looks like we have some speakers down here on the bottom. We have the actual sticks that are stored in here, which is really fun. So these are actually just your spares. So you can pull those out whenever need be. Let's go ahead and do that now. So there's one of the sticks. These do screw in, which is nice, so that you won't be losing them easily. As buttons go, you have your sticks. You've got the power button over here. You have the return to home button over here. On top, you have a still image and a record button. And then you've got your dial here at the bottom. And to fold this back up, just going to push the antennas up, fold this one down, fold that one down, and then push these phone holders up into position there. So comparison in size, the drone and controller are about the same size as you can see there. Let's take a close up look at the drone itself here. I'm gonna start pulling these little tabs off. This one here goes around the gimbal camera cover. And on this side we have a little tab that keeps the props together. Go ahead and pull that off. And now they are free here. And I'm also going to pull this one off back here which has a little bit of information on it. It simply says, charge to activate the battery. Flipping over, I'm gonna remove this tab down here as well. And that frees up the other four props on the bottom. Now, on the side over here, it has a one and a two. Number one says, unfold the front arm forward. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that sticker as well. And we will do what it says by moving the front arm forward on both sides. And then we will come down here to the other sticker 
that says unfold the rear arm downwards. So let's unfold downwards. I like the satisfying snap that it has when it comes back into place. So it's got kind of a, a spring there that keeps it where it should be. Now I know this drone is supposed to keep within 249 grams, which makes the top case kind of cheap sounding, but it really is lightweight and uh, fits in the palm of the hand. So let's take a closer look at the drone here, starting with the front. You can see the camera here. Let's go ahead and pull that protector off of there. And you can see the camera. And it does have that gimbal on the front. The battery has a charge indicator down here. It has the optical sensors. And then if you move over to the back side, you have a place for your charging cable, your micro SD card, and then you have the location of the battery. So let's see about pulling that out. I just pinched the little tab that's in here, a little bit hard to get to, and the battery slides right out of there. It has a nice guide groove to help you put it back in, in the correct direction and a rather cheap back door here. Cheap feeling at least, I should say. The props do swing freely and written right here on the side is 249 grams. So my first impression of the unboxing is pretty good. Everything is packaged well. The drone, of course, has that uh, lightweight feel to it, which is exactly what we want. The controller is almost just as heavy as the drone and seems to be made quite well. There is one thing that seems lacking in this kit, and that is the wall plug charger. So um, if you go to the quick start guide here, step number one is to use a wall charger to charge both the uh, controller and the drone, and that is absent. So other than that, it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug these up and start the charging process. And in the meantime, we can load up the phone and get our DJI Fly app. And the app is installed. Let's go ahead and open here. It's asking for permission to use the location and photos. Go ahead and set all. Let me log in real quick. I've installed the DJI Fly app. It's ready to go, looking for aircraft. Now I'm just waiting for the drone and controller to finish charging so we can go outside and fly. Okay, it's about 35 degrees out this morning, so the battery life may be a little bit reduced, but uh, I've got the drone in this Case Logic bag. I got this at Walmart. I don't even remember the name of the bag, but it uh, seems to fit things pretty good in here. So let's go ahead and give this its uh, first test flight. Now I did turn this on and do all of the updating of firmware. And I also put an SD card in there and got it uh, formatted and played around with the app just a little bit. So let's go ahead and give this a test here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get the arms pulled back here for our first test. I'm going to remove the uh, gimbal cover here and just set this down. One thing I don't like about this controller is that the uh, mount here does not hold a cell phone with a case on it. I'm a, a firm believer of using a case and so this is kind of a, a disappointment but it is what it is. So go ahead and get the sticks installed on this. Got my cell phone out. 
Okay, this is the first time I've used one of these controllers like this. Uh, I'm used to the Phantom 4, so it's a little bit awkward getting the cell phone in there with this cable, but I think we're good to go now. So we'll go ahead and turn on the controller here. Ha, there we go. All right, controller is on. We'll go ahead and get the drone on as well. It says to calibrate the compass. Rotate horizontally. Rotate vertically. Okay, it says calibration is complete. Okay, are we ready for this? It's so quiet. Okay, and we are recording. Definitely a bit slower than I'm used to than the uh, Phantom 4. Perhaps I just need to turn off some uh, speed settings here. This is full wide open. It's a nice day. I'm gonna use the gimbal to uh, look down here. It's nice to know that the uh, barn here is not interfering with the signal. I'm blown away at the sound of this drone. It's so much quieter than the one I'm used to. Let's see how high we can go with this. Right now it's recording in meters. I'll have to change that to feet. We're at 60 meters. 100 meters. Maximum altitude reached. 120 meters is where it tops out here. You can see that really gives us a good view from up here. Let's take a look at some of the modes. This is P mode. So just going to look at how quickly it spins around here at max speed and then how fast it goes forward and backwards. Very cool. Alright, I'm going to stop recording and let's see what the next, this is S mode which is sport mode. So spins so spins a bit faster I do believe. Let's see how quickly it moves. Oh, wow. yeah, much faster. Very cool. All right, let's stop the recording there. Next mode is uh, Cine Smooth. So I wanna see how that looks as it spins around. Yeah, much, much slower. Very cool. Yeah, a very steady spin around here. And let's see how quickly it moves forward. 
definitely nice and slow and smooth. Cool. All right, let's see if we can do a combination move where it's kind of spinning around and moving forward at the same time. <laughs> Very neat. Definitely a nice combination move. Okay, and then I'm gonna stop that again and see what is next. So we're back to P mode. Very cool. So after all of this, we're at 59% battery and the temperature is hovering around 32 degrees. So definitely still nice and cold out here. Now with the Phantom 4, I would always just uh, push the land button. I wanna see what happens if I just go all the way down here. Nice. It goes into auto land mode. Very cool. Coming from the Phantom 4, this drone is pretty amazing. It is so tiny and it is so responsive and the battery life is pretty amazing. I ran it down to right at half after all of that. So definitely impressed with this little thing. Um, so as a pros and cons list, size and weight, huge pro. Um, the cons really would be that the phone doesn't fit into the controller with a case on. And also it does not come with the wall plug for charging. Um, but I am very pleased with my purchase of $399. Um, so if you are interested in one of these drones, I have a link to the DJI Amazon down below. Um, that code now does give uh, a percentage to help out the channel here um, as an affiliate link. But thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.